G'day and welcome to a slightly different video for the channel. I wanted to make a video highlighting what I've added to my vinyl accumulation for 2023. But for the last couple of years I've only really been buying whatever King Gizzard have been releasing on vinyl and that's been pretty much it. So uh, to start off this, this video let's have a look at what I've bought from King Gizzard this year. So the first King Gizzard album I picked up this year was Petro Draconic Apocalypse. Uh, this is a double album and it's a sort of a thrashy prog metal uh, type album and it is awesome. It goes for about 40, 40 to 50 minutes and every song just like bleeds into each other. It's pretty sick. The only downside is, is the double album right, but it only fits like as a single jacket. It's not a gatefold. So the, they have to cram the inner sleeve or the inner jacket, the record, and then the sleeve that you put it in and it just doesn't fit properly. It's so frustrating. So you're pretty much you're left with the record like by itself and then the only way I could work out to have them fit was to have the records just sit behind the actual jacket in the plastic sleeve. It's ridiculous. But aside from that, it is pretty cool. It comes with an exclusive track on the end which pretty much summarizes the story of the album in like a spoken word type track. But honestly, it's pretty average. But the rest of the song, the rest of the songs on this album are fantastic. And the second release from King Gizzard this year is the Silver Chord. So being a King Gizzard anorak, I decided to get both the standard single LP edition as well as the double extended edition mix. After giving both copies a listen, I think I much prefer the uh, the single LP version. The double LP extended mix is just feels like it just waffles on forever because this album is completely different to Petro Draconic Apocalypse. So The Silver Chord is pretty much like a very heavy synth album with um, electronic drums and um, lots of noodling pretty much is <laughs> how I would describe it. So the, the single, uh, or not single, like the shortened versions of these songs is much better because the songs flow much better into each other and they don't they really don't overstay their welcome whereas in the double the extended mix holy shit the first song Thea takes up the whole entire of side a it's stupid like how long it goes for and the rest of the tracks are all about 10 minutes long too when really they should be like no longer than five minutes but anyway apart from that i think the single release of civil chords actually not too bad it's not my favourite album by theirs, but they have 24 other albums that you can enjoy, so they're not all going to be winners. But, if we go back to the, uh, the double LP version, let me just open up this bad boy, I have the same problem uh, as Petro Draconic. So this one actually is a gatefold, so e, e for effort, but the jackets are too tight, so you can't fit the records in with the inner sleeves. It's so stupid and like King Gizzard have these aren't the first records that have done this every single double album that they've released recently has been like this you can't fit the record into the jacket if you want to put it out of the paper sleeves it's just so frustrating I mean apart from my rants about double LPs these albums are actually pretty good but I just wish they would tweak how they package their albums so those are the two releases from this year, but I have also picked up a few copies of some of their older albums just to either replace existing copies that I already have or just something that's a bit different about some other releases. So this year I picked up an, a new pressing of Eyes Like the Sky. That's King Gizzard's second album and it's like a spaghetti western st storybook. I don't know how to describe it, but it has King Gizzard playing in the background. Um, to this audio narration that's done by one of the band members fathers So the reason I got this new pressing is because also doesn't bloody fit it um, Is because it has the original artwork on here So the version that I've always had was this one which is the flightless repress that they did I think in 2018 or 2017 somewhere around then but they used different artwork to distinguish between um, the original presses and the new ones but then since King Gizzard left their old record label, they've started to redo these old albums again back with the original artwork. And so that's something for me was worth getting for what, 40, 35, 40 bucks. And um, another reason as well 
Their early albums are very, very short. So, I was like the sky is only about 25 minutes or so. So this flightless pressing is actually a 45 RPM uh, record. Whereas this new pressing is 33. I know it's like a minor difference, like theoretically 45 should sound better. But honestly, the music is so lo-fi, it doesn't really make much of a difference, <laughs> in all honesty. And it, it's just so much more convenient just to keep everything at 33, when I've only got a few 45 RPM records. Because changing from 45 to 33 or vice versa is a bit of a faff on Rager turntables. It's the only downside uh, to the P3. But, um, because uh, I don't have like the power like upgrade where you just like press a button and it changes the speed. You actually have to take off the whole platter and move the belt, which is a bit, bit annoying. But, but anyway, so I got that one uh, together with the silver cord. And the last King Gizzard record that I've picked up, which only arrived like two days ago, is a, the new 2LP version of Paper Mache Dream Balloon. So my original copy... So this one here, this is actually a flightless... I think it's like a yellow pressing or something. I might put up some Discog stuff in the up in the background or something like that. But I got this at the very first King Gizzard show that I went to. Um, but it must have been like a... Not a pressing error, or there must be some manufacturing defect. Because it is so crackly, and I just cannot seem to get rid of the crackles in this one. Um, and it just sort of sounds a bit rubbish in general. Um... So I thought I'd pick up the brand new repress from about a year ago or so, and I got it on special, so I thought, why not? Um, but it, so it comes with the original LP in here, as well as a secondary instrumental LP, which I think would be quite cool, because this is a, an all-acoustic album. So it's, I mean, King Gizzard are sort of known to be very, very diverse with their albums, and so I think an acoustic instrumental album would be quite cool. But uh, since I only got it a couple days ago, I haven't actually had a chance to listen to it yet. But I'm very looking forward to, to giving that a spin. So we'll, we'll stick with the Aussie theme. So I've got two more albums that I've picked up this year. Um, I ordered them direct from Bandcamp because they're, they're quite small artists. Um, so I, yeah, I wouldn't be able to find these at a normal record store. So um, the first one that I picked up from Bandcamp is Toe Hider. Um, I have little to no memory of these memories. It's pretty much like if you if you're a fan of Jeff Rotal and like prog uh, and that sort of stuff, then you'd be absolutely dying to listen to this. It is fantastic. It's pretty much like a forty. It's sort of like thick as a brick. It's a forty-seven minute long single track, but split over two sides of vinyl. And with this being the vinyl version, there's two different endings to the album story. There's a good ending which you get on CD or um, digital. And, and then the vinyl comes with an exclusive bad ending. But it's pretty cool. It makes it makes it all your unique, like, um, listening experience, listening to the vinyl version of it. But it is awesome. It's like a good mixture of, like, like proggy parts, like metal, um, a cappella. It's fan. It's so cool. And, like, Toehard is just, like, some... It's, it's a guy who... I, I don't know what his name is. Um, I'll put his name on the screen, because I, I can't remember off the top of my head. But he essentially does all the parts himself, sort of like uh, Mike Oldfield. He records all the parts himself and just puts it all together at the end. It's really, really interesting and very, very cool. And it's a gatefold and it all fits. So that, that's a win. And the next album that I've received from an Australian band is Fronzoli from the Psychedelic Porn Crumpets. So they're uh, like a psych rock band from Western Australia. And I had to pre-order this through Bandcamp to get the exclusive Aussie press. Um, but it's really fun. It's a nice psychedelic, like, um, I guess, upbeat album to listen to. Only problem is my copy came damaged because they um, had the record shipped inside the jacket. But okay. um, but the record itself sounds fine. So I'm like, eh, can't really be bothered to trade that back in or get a re like a replacement or anything like that. So the next couple of records I actually um, purchased from a show last night. I went to watch the uh, the American band Frankie and the Witchfingers. When I was there, like uh, we had a like they had a merch store, and I decided to pick up two of their albums that I've had a lot of difficulties finding. So the album that I picked up from the show was Zam. So this is the album like two before their latest album, but it was essentially their most mainstream and most popular album so far. 
And um, I've listened to it like bits and pieces, but never really had a chance to listen to it all the way through. But this can go for a lot of money. And so it's pretty much been out of my price point um, to get a copy, considering it's not one that I know that well. But at the show, they had it for 70 Australian dollars, which is about $20 cheaper than the normal record store um, price. That, like in, in Australian stores, it can be quite expensive. Um, so obviously this is the repress because the originals go for about six billion dollars or whatever it is So uh, I'm really looking forward to, to listening to that one. So it's also a double has the same fucking problem where it's a double in a single <sighs> Anyway So this is turning into a rant about me <laughs> About vinyl packaging and not showing off what I've purchased but Anyway, and so uh, the last album that I the second album that I picked up was their latest one uh, called data doom and they played a lot of tracks from this album last night. And they sound fucking sick. They're so much fun to listen to. And so I've never really had a chance to listen to this much. Um, like when it came out. Just because I think the only way I could buy this was online. I was like, mm, yeah. Uh, I'll wait till I like, see them and then I'll decide. But these new songs slap. So I decided to buy the LP when I was there as well. Obviously haven't had a chance to listen to them yet. Because I only bought it last night. So... Put them down there and now we come to the last ones um so these last few came fairly recently from this record shop called discrepancy records which um like ship throughout australia for free shipping and every now and then they do these deals like black friday or like a clear out sale so that's where i got most of these from so if we have a look the first one that i grabbed was this final fantasy 3 um orchestral slash original game sound LP. It's really cool. So uh, I only I've been replaying a lot of the Final Fantasy 3 or well, the old Final Fantasy like pixel remasters recently and I saw this was on special um, just as I finished playing Final Fantasy 3. And so the tracks that are on here, there's not very many on here, but um, like the Four Souls version is like your orchestral version and then the original sounds is literally from the game. So that side is absolutely tiny. So I'll quickly show you what the record looks like. It's just black vinyl, but um, you can see how short the track lengths are. So, oops, sorry. So there's the label there where you can see my <laughs> my window through the record. Um, but you can see all the grooves go pretty much all the way to the middle. And then you look at the game sounds and it stops like a third of the way through. <laughs> it's pretty funny because they only do like one loop of the tracks each. So it doesn't go for very long. They sort of do it in the weird, in a weird order. They put the uh, the Four Souls version on side A, and then the game version on side B. But I actually prefer to listen to it back to front, so you can hear what the original game sounds like, and then listen to the orchestral version after that. But otherwise, it's very, very cool. If I was to get this at uh, full price, whoop, at full price, it'd be way too much. It's sort of around like. 75 to 80 Australian dollars, but then I managed to get this for around 48 to 50 dollars from memory through the sale of discrepancy So I think that was, that was worth it for something that's pretty uncommon um, Especially like video game soundtracks. I find a very uh, Very rare especially for games that, that you have played yourself um, So the next one I got is close to the edge my favorite album of all time because I did, just needed another version of it. So the reason I got another copy of Close to the Edge is because this is the Chris Bellman cut of Close to the Edge. So pretty much, I never really had a good copy of Close to the Edge on record just because there's so many quiet passages throughout and um, they always seem to get like completely destroyed by like dust and like um, pops and cracks. So I wanted to get a brand new copy mixed and also oh, uh, cut by someone really well renowned in the industry and they had it on sale at discrepancy records so i thought why not this one sounds fantastic it sounds awesome so i'm glad i finally have a good vinyl copy of that and then the last album that i got was jethro tull's aqualung but uh the stephen wilson stereo mix there we go so for any of you who have been around for a little bit uh, one of my first videos I did was on my US copy of Aqualung and it sounded dog shit. So I <laughs> went and bought by my own recommendation, the Steven Wilson mix, because they had this on special too. And um, I haven't had a chance to listen to it yet, but I'm very, very excited. It's doing 
what my other copy sounds like. So that pretty much wraps up uh, the records that I've bought in 2023. There's a few others here and there, but those are the most recent ones that I've picked up and I thought were the most interesting. But yeah, no, I do appreciate you watching the video. Um, I've really enjoyed buying new records again since getting the Rega P3. And uh, I'd kind of forgotten the magic of buying a new record and like opening up and playing it for the first time. It's something that I've sort of been missing uh, until buying this new P3. So uh, I hope to see you again soon in the next video. Probably be back to normal, uh, normal scheduling with vinyl reviews whenever I can get around to making videos. Or maybe I'll do something like this every few months just to... I don't know, gush about vinyl records again. Anyway, I'll see you all again soon.